What is up everyone? Today I'm going to be filming a video that you guys probably really weren't expecting. But I kind of figured that I'd made so many changes to this setup, and I really like this setup, that it would be a shame not to show you before it's broken down. Now, as you guys know, I'll be moving in the near future, and I haven't sort of announced the finalised details, um, just because... I don't really know all of the finalised details, but things are looking really good at the moment. So I thought I'd show you guys this setup while it's still set up, um, because of course when I have my new office down in the new place, it's going to be completely different. Now I know I did a tour of a geek's desk relatively um, recently, probably about eight months ago or something. This setup is totally, totally changed. So this isn't going to be a sort of really clever, fancy video. This is just going to be a sort of vlog style of me just pointing the camera at all my stuff and basically showing you guys what I've got. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So of course, as you guys know, we have the test bench setup. I've recently done a video about this PC. If you haven't checked it out, then uh, feel free to check it out. I have part two coming hopefully for the next video. So this test bench setup really, really did change the way that I test and repair computers. It basically consists consists of this Dell 2009 monitor on a monitor arm back there as you guys can see sitting up on the desk and with a multi-core cable that I'm calling it multi-core with um, network VGA DVI USB power and all that kind of thing running to whatever system I'm using it works out really well but it wasn't as ideal as I thought it was going to be so I've learned a lot from doing this and I will be implementing a similar setup in my new office but much much more refined um, one of the major downfalls to this setup is when I do have a test bench setup I lose this entire portion of my desk so that is going to be rectified in the new office somehow and uh, yeah I'm generally really looking forward to getting all of that done but for now this is absolutely fantastic and it served me well since I set it up. Of course I'm not going to go over any of this stuff down here um, I'm not going to count it as part of my setup we're just going to do the desktop basically because everything else is a shambles including the server shelf actually um, but what I'm going to do is pull out my chair and yes this will be um, probably replaced. It's totally, totally broken by now, but I've had it for years and years and years. So it's time to get a new chair when we, uh, when we move to the new office. But let me sit down and show you guys what we've got going right here. So this is the MacBook Pro setup. There is my Hackintosh, as you guys know, um, but I still have issues with it. Now, I have been fiddling with it, and it is something that we are going to get working in the new place, so don't worry about that, um, but that's to come. At the moment, we're running my Retina MacBook Pro for my main setup. There it is, sitting right there. It is a 2 gigahertz late 2013 model, I want to say. I think it is. Um, it's got 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, of course and the Intel Iris Pro graphics. It's not the highest end 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro by any means, but it's still a beast and I absolutely love it. It's stable as anything. It is driving these two Dell U2412Ms. I do have three of these and I do plan on using all three on my setup again uh, once I have a computer that can output to them. And of course, that will pretty much be the Hackintosh. But for now, I do still have a triple display setup. It's just one is nine inches smaller, which is not a bad compromise for this setup. So in terms of that main computer setup, that is basically it. The MacBook Pro driving those two displays with a keyboard and mouse. It's as simple as that. But what I'm going to do now is just go across a few of the items or pretty much all of the items. And uh, we're going to take a look at what we've got each individual part of the desk. Um, so this is my Machionics 820i or 802i, whatever the model number is. This is a three channel, or you can pretty much, yeah, three channel. It's got two stereo channels, but I have no use for them at the moment. It's a three channel, it's got three mic preamps, audio interface, uh, works with Firewire, and it has very, very good, clean Onyx preamps. The Onyx preamps are very, very good, and I'm extremely familiar with them because I used to have a Blackbird interface in the studio, as you guys know. This at the moment is only the input heart of my audio setup, but in the new office, this will be 
the heart of everything audio in the, in the entire office. So I will be utilizing the stereo channels, I will be utilizing nearly every feature on this mixer, um, and I won't be using these creative speakers. People can pretty much guess what I'm probably going to be using, but the output will also go through this once we're in the new office. Um, but at the moment, I basically use channel 1 for my primary microphone on the desk setup. That is this guy right here. We'll go over that uh, later on. Channel 2 is for my lapel mic or my lav mic that I've been using in various videos here and there. Not all videos, um, but pretty much, mm, I'd say maybe used it in three or four videos, I don't know. And the third channel is for my floater microphone. And my floater microphone is basically this XLR here, draping on this boom stand and wherever I need a mic in the room for whatever reason, I normally put uh, an AKG C1000 on there. Any video that you see me recording my face and I'm sitting with this setup behind me, the last couple of those have been recorded with this microphone, um, just because I can get a little bit more from it than the lav mic. Um, but if I'm moving around in the video, the lav mic is my uh, mic of choice. Now, since I bought this Canon S120 with my birthday money, I haven't really been using the audio setup, but um, that's more to do with time and effort, really. So don't worry, uh, really good audio will be refined and returned to the setup. Now, as well as these XLR connections, you may be able to see that I do actually have some insert connections right here. These aren't line-ins, these are insert cables. So I'm currently inserting a single 1U but two-way, so stereo compressor, or at the moment it's set up in dual mono compressor. Channel 1 is for this beauty, and channel 2 is for my lav mic. Basically, hardware compression means that I can dial in all the settings I want, and I can leave it at that. Um, it's great because it's clean, easy to use, and at one touch I can just adjust whatever compressor setting I want for each of those microphones, but at the same time, um, it creates a much more convenient workflow because if I had to do it all in software, I'd have to apply, even if I'd made up my own compressor presets in software, I'd have to apply them to every project. This way, I can compress going in and also it eliminates clipping. Um, once you've clipped on the desk, there's not much you can do with it in post. So it's nice to completely, completely avoid clipping going in no matter what happens. So I do have a fairly heavy amount of compression on this microphone. Um, this is pretty much sort of what I would call like a radio broadcaster's kind of compressor settings. And then this one for the lav mic is a little bit more tailored to that microphone. Um, it's a little bit more natural sounding. And um, yeah, it integrates really well. I've had the compressor on the setter pretty much since I started using my lav mic. Um, so I'm very happy with how that's turning out, but this is all still an experiment. Things will be much more properly set up in the new office. At the moment, everything here is really crammed in. In the new office, everything will have its dedicated space. You can pretty much guarantee that everything will be better there because because I'll have thought it through from start to finish. Um, this is the case, my S120. My S120 sits there as the go-to camera these days. Here we have all of my pen drives and SD cards and stuff. This pile just sort of merges underneath the mixer, which is quite funny. I lose things under there, and I can actually feel a USB stick in the distance. But they just all sit there. They're all for different things. Um, some of them used more than others, but every geek has a pile like this. This is the remote for my desk lighting. Now, I've got soft boxes for video setup at the moment, just so you guys get a good you know, atmosphere. But the desk lighting is just a simple... Uh, you can barely see it. Um, just fills the back of the desk area with colour. Again, the new office would be much more improved with lighting. Coming over here, this is my microphone receiver. Now, one thing I haven't answered... Oh, that's the power button, idiot. One thing I haven't answered um, is how what uh, lav mic I'm using and how I'm using it with the mixer. As you can see, I'm going in XLR, and I'm not. it's not going anywhere near the camera. I don't own a camera with an audio input, and I don't own a Zoom H1 or anything like that. Um, so this is basically my lav mic, and it is the cheapest of the cheap Tom and lav mic, but... Um, you don't need to spend a lot of money on the microphone itself in this uh, in this situation, unless you go right, right up there. They're all going to sound pretty much the same, and you will need to do a little bit with EQ in post, etc. Um, but this is the belt pack. This is a digital um, adjustable frequency 
uh, wireless transmitter that I wear on my belt. And then it gets received by this receiver right here. It has antennas, that black sort of stick thing back there is an antenna. There's also one that side. And I get signal and reception around the whole house, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, that goes XLR straight into the desk, then out of the desk, into the compressor, out of the compressor, back into the desk, and then finally into the computer. Job done. So this sits here when I'm not using it. Um, that takes two AA batteries in case anyone cares. I do need to get a proper battery charging station just to make sure that I do everything properly. Um, but these act as a pretty good podium for my monitors. So let's turn that off. Up here we've just got some of the stuff that I use fairly often. We have a pen, a standard Phillips screwdriver, a camera lens pen that's got like a cleaning brush end and a felt end, and my unboxing knife that is um, older than the age of probably 10% of my viewers all put together. Um, here we have my iPod 5th gen, my only iPod that I own these days, and my go-to iPod. Not that I go to an iPod often these days, but it is there if I want it, and it is my favourite iPod of all time. It's sitting in the Apple Universal dock. And here is the tripod, uh, what do you call these, head mount thingy, not sure, whatever. Um, I'm not really a guy that knows much terminology in terms of that kind of thing. But there it is for when I need that, because as you guys know, a lot of my videos are filmed with a tripod. Um, so that is basically that little corner and probably the part that people were most curious about. But there are some other interesting things on this setup. Of course, we have my left display, my center display. I'm still using the Apple Pro keyboard and the Logitech MX518 or whatever, MGX, whatever it is. Discontinued now, discontinued a long time ago, in fact, but still a solid mouse. We have the creative speakers. Uh, these will be some of the last weeks and months of using these speakers. They've done me really, really well since 2008. And uh, yeah, I'd still be using them now. I wouldn't replace them with any computer speakers, but I'm replacing them with something that is not computer speakers in the new office. I would definitely find a use for these as they are fantastic speakers. I'm not gonna get rid of them at all. They still to this day continue to blow me away with how good they sound. So they work in tandem with the subwoofer underneath the desk. I'm not gonna show you, it's a mess under there. And uh, you've all seen it before. Coming over, we have the MacBook Pro, absolutely full to the gills in terms of every single port used up. So FireWire out to the mixer, mini display port, MagSafe, USB, that is the main USB going to the hub. That is the audio output. I'm not using my XMOD at the moment because El Capitan has big issues with USB sound cards. The MacBook Pro itself is sitting on the Griffin elevator stand. And under the stand, we have my three terabyte time machine drive. Again, that drive is the last final backup from my Mac Pro and I'm still pretty much living off of the final Mac Pro time machine backup. It's sad to say, but I have some big, big issues in terms of data migration and data archive at the moment. It is proving to be very stressful to keep a track on my roughly 13 terabytes of data. Um, it's proving to be challenging and accessing the files that I need from time to time is definitely challenging. Uh, but we're getting there. I've got a stack of hard drives under the desk and we're plodding through it. I think I'm only gonna have about, after all of this, I'm only gonna have about 800 gigs to about one and a half terabytes of duplicate files, but it's better to have duplicate files um, in my archive than, than not have the files at all. So that is that. Underneath here we have uh, a USB hub. This is made by Anchor. It's a powered USB 3 hub proving to be pretty decent. No complaints. Over here we have the Apple USB Super Drive. Big mistake in buying that one folks. I think it is cool but I think it is total bollocks at the same time. If you guys don't know why it's basically stripped right back in software and Apple don't let you do a thing with it that they don't approve of. You can't connect it to a Mac that it is isn't supported on, you can't connect it to a PC, you can't connect it to a Hackintosh, can't even connect it to a USB hub. So all in all, that thing, crap. And uh, yeah, I do love the design and it looks really nice on the desk, but the functionality is crappy. Although I do have it taking up its own USB port and it works flawlessly with my Mac. So I can't complain at this stage. Here we have HDMI going out to this monitor. It terminates in DVI, it's a HDMI to DVI cable. Here we have a one terabyte My Passport drive. That is basically at the moment my iTunes drive. It hosts my iTunes library because normally I kept it internal on my Mac Pro and um, 
Yeah, I unboxed that and bought that for the sole purpose of holding my iTunes library. Here is the XMod, still connected because with every little update to OS X I will be checking the functionality. Here we have an InnerTech Drive Toaster, something that has saved my ass loads of times now and something that I don't know how I lived without for so long. Um, it takes 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch uh, SATA drives, either mechanical drives, hybrid drives or SSDs, it doesn't matter. Um, here is my iPad Mini, uh, iPad Mini 3 rather, sits there, doesn't get a lot of use, um, but it's not the quantity of use that I really care about, it's the use that I get out of it when I use it, so it's normally for work related tasks, especially in the summer, and uh, pretty much with the lighting and sound, that's where I use this guy, but I use it for a few other things as well, so it's a great system, don't want to sell it to buy the new iPad Mini, I'm not really that bothered about it. Over here we have my two primary camera battery chargers. Um, this one is for the S120 that I'm using now. This one is for the Fujifilm camera um, that I use for pretty much, probably about half of my content these days. It's hard to say because I've been a little slow with the making videos. Here is a magnifying glass. It's clamped to the side of the desk. As you guys know, I've got terrible eyesight. Uh, I'm registered sight impaired. So I, it's really handy to have a magnifying glass right there that can just sit there and it means I can grab anything small, put it behind it and just take a closer look. I also use two floating magnifying glasses down here. Um, I've got this one which is really, really good actually um, that I use for most, most things. Then I've got this flip out pocket one that I use much less but this is also a good uh, magnifier. So it's good to be able to see what I'm doing um, and that clip on one is great. It also acts as a brilliant placeholder holder for certain cables, so that's handy as well. Down here we have the N64 controller. Now, the N64 isn't actually a permanent addition to my desk at the moment. Basically, the story behind the N64 is I've been working on a video series, and by that I mean I've just been scripting it at the moment. I haven't done any more work. Um, I was going to start recording a few bits and bobs for it today, but I didn't get a chance. Um, I've been working on a series that revolves around the N64 because we're at quite an interesting time in terms of collecting and buying for the N64 now. So I'm going to be doing a three or four part series over the next couple of months um, chatting about the N64 and uh, my advice for buyer's guide and if you want to get into collecting and stuff. And it's going to be a pretty cool series. So I've got the N64 up here at the moment. A, to play it. Um, because I like playing it. It's hooked up to this monitor, unless you have you know, didn't notice already. Um, but I really like playing it, and of course, I will need it up here to record gameplay. Um, now, I haven't had this monitor up here for very long. If I just go back, this is the BenQ 24-inch monitor from up in the studio. As you guys know, I have a spare U2412M and an Apple 20-inch cinema display, so this was uh, great to bring down here, and it has HDMI as well. And when I finally get a working capture card, um, I'd be able to use HDMI to monitor playback. Now this is an Elgato Game Capture HD, possibly, arguably, the most popular capture card of all time. Uh, however, I do have problems with the AV breakout, so I do need to find the correct uh, AV breakout. You can use this component one, but um, a couple of pins were broken on mine when I received it, bought it secondhand on eBay, um, should have just gone for it brand new, but I thought it was worth the risk, but it doesn't work properly. Um, so at the moment I've got the N64 output in composite, but going into the VGA adapter that's plugged into that. So it's currently impossible for me to record gameplay, but as soon as I get a replacement one of these, then I will have it permanently hooked up behind there. So that's the power hack with the N64 sitting on top of it, controller there, and also I swing round the monitor if I want to play. Me and Jess often play, or should I say Jess and I if I want to be more proper English, we often play N64 and uh, we do really enjoy it. It is hooked up to its own set of speakers. Down here we have a little sub for turn it up. The two speakers are actually on the windowsill there. May look a bit stupid but you can hear what you're doing which is great and control all your levels. I can also use headphones if I want to, which is great for obviously recording gameplay or nighttime playing. And uh, this isn't limited to the N64, I can capture pretty much anything. Once all this is hooked up, I've got HDMI cable running from back there all the way around so I can record Wii U gameplay and stuff like that um, because I will be doing quite a bit more gaming content very soon. So that's also on a Duronic monitor arm, same as the test bench monitor arm. Uh, it comes up and as you can see, just clamps on back there. This is my microphone. Now, this is great because I use it for everything these days. I've sold my Snowball, 
I did a bit of a swap with the 20 inch cinema display as you guys know. I can use this mic for voiceovers and videos, I can use it for Skype calls, I can use it for anything, but I can also swing it around like this and use it to voice over gameplay when I finally start recording gameplay. It's really hard to do this while holding the camera, guys. Um, but that's on a proper mount there, nice shock mount. For anyone who doesn't know, that is an M-Audio uh, Nova microphone. It costs about £80. It's brilliant for the price. It's a large diaphragm condenser, no bells, no whistles. You can get better sounding mics for the price, especially if you can find like a Sontronics STC2 on eBay secondhand um, for roughly 80 or 90 pounds. But this is the mic that I've had for years and years and uh, I finally started using it where I should have been using it all along and that is on my desk setup. So that is that. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, that's pretty much it. The speakers for the N64. Because of all this extra crap that I got going, I do have another power strip back here, but it's awfully messy down there. Um, so I don't want to show that. The Hackintosh is not currently connected, but things are a bit tidier. Of course, the server shelf is pretty crazy at the moment. You can see one of my Mac Minis is wonky. I'm not even going to show you the server shelf. As you can see, the RAID array is powered down, simply being because in the night uh, it's too loud. Even though there's no bed in this room and nobody sleeps in this room, it's still too loud. Um, this is going to be something that I revisit and readdress in the new place. Um, yeah, and that's it. I have a softbox there that I can just turn on and off. And if I turn it off for a second, you guys can see a little bit more of the desk lighting. I do still have another softbox on back there. But you guys can see, yeah, the desk lighting. You can imagine that it looks pretty damn sweet. Um, so that is that. That is the softbox. And that is it for my setup. That's how it's looking right now, guys. This is the setup that I've been rocking for a little while now. And this is the setup that I'm going to rock until the day that I leave. So I am super, super proud of it. This is the true um, accumulation of everything that I have learned across the last six or seven years of having this setup. Um, well, I guess my room was redone in 2010, so five years. But regardless, I've learned so much. And this is basically the product of everything that we have been through on the channel over the past five years. So there it is. I hope you guys like it. Feel free to comment down below. But this is just the beginning. You guys wait until you see the setup in the new office. It's not going to happen overnight. I'm estimating that it'll probably take around 12 months for me to be able to gather together gather together everything that I want for the new setup but once it's done it is going to be truly the ultimate setup for my needs and I cannot wait to uh, to do it so there is my setup looking pretty damn sweet even if I do say so myself I really really do like it and I will miss it but great great things are to come also so thank you very much for watching everyone and of course as always I will see you in the next video